Red Dead Redemption 2 has had a somewhat bumpy PC launch, which is not unexpected considering when a game launches on console, it's optimized for very specific hardware. And in PCs, you can have any bunch of variables and thus you'll find yourself having to figure out what settings work best for your machine yourself. And then of course, there's the point that it took forever to decrypt and a lot of people struggle to get it to actually work because after hours of this, the three gigabyte patch and then the redistributable packages and things like that, people have found themselves experiencing a plethora of game crashes and error messages like the one shown now. The launch has been nothing short of a mess. However, I think I got off lucky as I got the game running well enough. And so I thought I'd give my thoughts on the Red Dead Redemption 2 PC version, barring the fact that it took forever to actually launch. Firing up the game, obviously it wasn't exactly a smooth experience with it trying to optimize itself for 4K as opposed to my 1080p display. But instead of trying to upscale the display resolution, I got gifted with a quarter of the page taking up the entire screen. So then I had to boot up the game in safe mode just so I could change the settings to bring it down. After that ordeal, I came to the realization that my GTX 1080 Ti wasn't enough to play this game at ultra settings. So obviously I did the big epic gamer move of crying myself to sleep with a tub of ice cream. Obviously no, I'm not too proud to change the settings down to high. And looking at the graphics menu, there is absolutely no reason why this machine should not be able to handle ultra. Sometimes I don't know if it's just technology that hates me or if it's God secretly telling me to stop. Oh, would you look at that? A glitch. That's the most normal thing I've seen all day. So, of course, I got to enjoy the glorious 60 FPS in Red Dead Redemption 2, unless I went anywhere near Valentine or any other populated area, and then my PC would scream at me to end its misery. Obviously, turned down to high settings capped at 30 FPS. It wasn't too bad. However, if you're going to do that, what's the fucking point in playing on PC anyway? The way my PC is acting, you'd think I'm waterboarding it. That being said, if you're exclusively a PC gamer and you just want to play Red Dead Redemption 2, then maybe that will be enough for you. But if you have yourself a powerful PC and there's no reason why it should be bottlenecking, then you're not realistically going to want to settle for 30 FPS on high settings. That being said, even Nvidia's very own RTX 2080 Ti cannot handle this thing at 4K 60 Ultra, which means this game makes that graphics card fail in one of the only aspects in which you'd ever actually want to buy one. Along with the lovely real-time ray tracing, and to put that into perspective, my PC crashed just googling it. No! I've never agreed with something more in my life, so I'm not sure if it's just post PC launch shenanigans or if my PC's being a bit special needs or a bit of both, but it hasn't been the smoothest of experiences to say the very least. But like I said, everyone getting this error message for one is not something that is local to my PC, so it's not a stretch to believe that the optimization could just be retarded. That being said, games, especially open world games, are never really made with the intention of actually being played at 60 frames per second, so when you cap it down to 30, most of those issues tend to go away. I don't like to use that as like an excuse when you know you should be able to easily play 60 frames because there doesn't appear to be any actual reason for not being able to but it is kind of a no shit Sherlock solution for now to make the game at least playable for people who play exclusively PC. Moving away from performance let's talk about the PC version of the game in other aspects. Now I can't say too much about the keyboard and mouse controls as I'm of the firm belief that keyboard and mouse in third person games just do not mix and so instead I've hooked up an Xbox One controller. And to people who go down to the comments going, hey this is just Xbox One gameplay. I don't even own an Xbox One so it's PC. Though of all the complaints people have been popping up online over the past 24 hours or so, none of them have been about the keyboard and mouse controls. Moving on with PCs being a bit more free and what you can do with them, I was a bit disappointed to find that there was still a profanity check in naming your horse, but that is far, far from the end of the world, let's be honest. And I'm sure inevitably some modder will come along and go, you know what, that needs to go. And so instead of having to name my horse Keith, I can opt for something much more questionable. But as it stands now, Keith will do. I didn't actually name my horse Keith, just in case you were getting worried. Visually, on high settings, the game is just as glorious as the console counterpart, and on Ultra, I did notice some significant differences in character definition and facial hair textures, among other things. I'm sure the technical blips will be caused by one setting, probably in the advanced section that I haven't really fathomed yet, but I'm sure I'll figure it out and get back to everybody on that front. But you can definitely tell that this game has been visually enhanced for PC, though people stating that it looks like a completely different game are talking out their asses. And while we're at it, people who are expecting it to look completely different are also naive because in the end of the day, Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to look, for the most part, like Red Dead Redemption 2. So I'm not really sure how different you expected it to look. One of the PC version's exclusive features, or at least currently an exclusive feature that I've been enjoying quite thoroughly, is of course the photo mode. 
for the most part, this is a really fun, useful photo mode. It doesn't have to be anything special, as most photo modes are just a load of settings you faff about and you get some great shots. And this is no different there. There are some things that they could definitely add to it and tweak later on down the line, such as the ability to change the hue settings, to change saturation, to change the vibrance, static and grain effects bloom and fog effects as well, a vignette setting to draw the focus more towards the center of the image, and maybe different kind of blur types. At the moment, it's got a very general blur setting. However, I think a directional blur would also look pretty good. Say if you're taking a screenshot on the move, that means the background, you can sort of see the movement in that. Another feature they could do with adding is the option to focus on a specific thing and then blur everything else, as currently you have to select a blur distance and then hope for the best. So the ability to hover over your character with a cursor, for example, and then use Using blur effects and everything behind the character blurs, that sort of thing is what I mean. But if you find yourself feeling creative and you're playing Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC, definitely don't pass up an opportunity to give the photo mode a try. I think you'll definitely get some interesting results, and there's plenty of options there to tweak to make any situation look just right. Though the extent of what you can do doesn't necessarily feel complete just yet, so maybe in an update later on down the line they'll add further stuff that we can do with it. One thing that's really interesting about this photo mode, however, is the fact that you can access it during cutscenes and edit with, through filters and stuff snapshots from those cutscenes to make it really dramatic, which is really cool in my opinion, and definitely something more games with photo modes should do. So on the whole, on the photo mode front, there's a lot that they can definitely do to improve it, but I don't have any complaints necessarily so far. On the subject of the supposed extra content that's in the PC version of the game, I haven't actually found any yet, but as soon as I do, I'll get back to you. That being said, I doubt it'll be a lower quality than the high quality stuff that's already in the game from what we've played on console. Though I do believe the extra content is just bounty hunts and things, so I doubt it matters that much anyway. On the glitches front, I've run into one or two, but there's nothing too invasive, nothing game-breaking, and certainly nothing that's not resolvable. And I mean, you can't get rid of every single glitch in a game, you'll still find some, so to be honest, I can't really complain on that front either. So ultimately, with a bit of tweaking here and there, Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC isn't actually that bad after all, provided you can actually open it. Sure, there are some things that need fixing, tweaking, and so on and so forth, and I'm sure Rockstar will be focused on addressing that. It is something of a reality in PC gaming these days that when a game launches on PC, it's usually not well optimized for that specific machine, and so it surely takes some tweaking to figure out the issues and then work around them. And like I said I'm sure Rockstar is working hard on their end to make our lives easier as well. Ultimately I'm glad that Red Dead Redemption 2 is finally on PC, flaws and all, and I look forward to tweaking with settings and things and figuring out what exactly is causing so many performance hits and then I can address it. I'll tell you what, if I figure it out, I'll post a video for you guys to follow exactly what I do so that you know what's causing the problems. That is if you're running a reasonably powerful machine and yet you seem to be encountering some issues that you can't get around. So thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff. That would be really appreciated. Maybe consider becoming a patron as well if you want to. There's some extra content over there, but whether or not you think it's worth it is completely up to you. Anyways, I'll see you all very soon with another video at some point.